So here's an example of a function that is big O of n squared. So consider this function a n squared plus b n plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. And again, let's assume that a is a positive constant. So p of n, which is a n squared plus b n plus c, belongs to the set big O of n squared, where p of n is big O of n squared. How do we prove this? Well, by the definition of big O of uh, f of n, for p of n to be big O of f of n, there should exist a constant c. Okay, we're talking again about a single constant, not two constants as in the big O notation. There should exist a, a, a constant c greater than zero such that for large n, okay, or values of n that are large enough beyond some threshold, p of n needs to be bounded from above by a constant multiple of n squared. So p of n here is a n squared plus b n plus c. And this needs to be bounded from above by c times n squared. Actually, let me use a different, let me use the, let me call this constant as c1 because we also have this other constant called c. And so there'll be a clash of names here. So there should exist a constant, uh, or let's call it c2 to be consistent with the big O notation where we had the constant c2 representing the upper bound. And since the big O notation is exclusively talking about an upper bound, let's, let's for the uh, sake of consistency use uh, c2 to stand for that constant. So how do we prove that there exists a constant c2 greater than zero such that c2 times n squared is an upper bound on this function a n squared plus b n plus c for large n. Well, again, as in the big O notation, let's try, let's try setting c2 to be equal to a plus one. a is the coefficient of the dominant term here. So if we increase the coefficient, we can expect to get something that is an upper bound on this function. So let c2 be equal to a plus one. Note that in order to prove that there exists a constant, we just have to give one example of a constant for which this condition is true. So finding any one example of a constant is good enough. So let's try this example, C2, let, let C2 be equal to a plus one. So can we prove that a n squared plus b n plus c is less than or equal to a plus one n squared for large n? Well, for this, inequality to hold, we can take the terms on the left hand side to, towards the right. For this inequality to hold, n squared multiplied by a plus one minus a, which is nothing but the coefficient one. So n squared minus bn minus c needs to be greater than or equal to zero for large n. So is this true? Is n square minus bn minus c greater than or equal to zero for large n? Well, the answer is yes, because the dominant term here is n square. And if you take the ratio of bn or this constant c with n square, and look at where that ratio tends to as n tends to infinity, you're gonna find that the answer is zero. The ratio will uh, converge towards zero. And so these terms will become relatively insignificant compared to the value of n squared as n grows large. And another way to see this is that since this is a quadratic expression, we know that the uh, uh, if we plot this expression n squared minus bn minus c as a function of n, we're going to get some we're going to get some uh, parabola and 
because the coefficient of n square is equal to 1, and 1 is a positive coefficient, the parabola is going to open upwards. And for values of n to the right of the second root of uh, this quadratic expression, we can see that the value of this expression, n square minus bn minus c, is going to be positive. It's going to be above 0. 0 is represented by this horizontal line or the number line. Uh, this is the y equal to 0 line. Uh, this is this is our n rule and this is uh, t of n. So for values of n larger than the uh, than this root of this quadratic expression, t of n is greater than zero. And so for large n, so th these are two different ways in which you can argue. You can argue this based on uh, visual representation of this quadratic expression and argue that you know where we can argue that for large n the value of this curve this curve is going to rise above the y equal to zero line uh, which is basically the horizontal axis another way to argue this is to look at the ratio of these terms to n square as n becomes very large and because these ratios are going to be relatively insignificant compared to n square even if they are negative in their sign, in their overall sign, we don't know whether they will actually be negative because B and C themselves may be negative here. But to the extent that these numbers are going to be subtracted from n square in terms of their absolute value, the result of this expression won't go below zero because these numbers are going to be insignificant compared to the value of n square. So the answer to this question is yes, n square minus B and minus C is greater than or equal to 0 for large n. So there must be some threshold beyond which this applies. And so we can we have shown that t of n is bounded from above by a constant multiple of n square for large n. And so t of n is big O of n square or belongs to the set big O of n squared.